What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? This is Muscle, and this is another Two Line Music Cuts Entertainment Report podcast. And today, we have a really special guest in the bill. And listen, this gentleman has been giving you hits from in the early 90s. He's the one that says the music is called World Hop. He has a new album right now called Unpredictable. You know we have in the building today? We have Danute in the building today. What's going on, my brother? Well, just here enjoying life, promoting a new album, getting love from all the DJs, you know, getting honor from everybody that loved the 90s and just continuing with the career and life, you know? For real. Thank you so much for joining us here on the Entertainment Report podcast today because on this podcast, we like to go right from the beginning and then bring it right up to 2022. So my first question for you is this. Where did you grow up in Jamaica and what type of child were you? Well, I grew up in Port Antonio, Jamaica, and then in Kingston, Jamaica for the older years of my life. Now, as a child, I was just nature, all nature, the beach in Port Antonio, the river at my grandfather land, um, waterfalls in a Frenchman school of Sansan, Boston Beach, Reach Falls, like every other day, riding my bicycle. Mm -hmm. So I, I just had a happy childhood there. And then Kingston now was when I went to high school at Olmas, et cetera, you know? Got you. So this time here now, growing up, what do you think you were going to be or what did you think you were going to get into at that time there? Well, I was always saying, you know, I'd please my father and my family and be a lawyer, which is what I wanted to be. But it never got that way because, you know, it's like, Music took me over, you know what I'm saying? Just getting into the whole music and partying, it just took me over and it just lead me in a whole new direction, you know? And when did you actually discover music like this is something you like, something you heard, an artist, a sound, something that you remember your early hearing music and you definitely liking it? Well, my uncle Warren in Port Antonio, every Sunday he used to play like Air Supply, you know, Teddy Pendergrass. Whitney Houston, all them kind of classics there, you know what I mean? And it was more soul music, you know what I mean? Not enough reggae, really. And then it's like New Edition came out, and then I took to Cool It Now, and I used to like try and make up a song to Cool It Now. And then after that now, my bigger brother now, David, who is gone now, you know, he used to listen to like Stereo One with Ricky Stereo, Wolfman and Stitchy. And I start catching like more, you know, what dancehall ears was, you know what I'm saying? So that's where it's, you know. And did you ever want to be a singer or it was always a DJ that was in your mind when it came to music? Well, I'm really, I really wanted to be a singer still, cause enough of my styles. Every woman want that hardcore lover, man. A man who know how fit is really like singing, but then I just use tones. You know, so I would go, hardcore, she wanted some more upon me, but did you saw her? So it's like a science to it. And it's like, it's really singing. I really love still, but if I, I love singing, like no, my new stuff, unpredictable is like, you know, really like what the industry is right now, which is a lot of sing jays, not like you can say you're stuck in a one tone as you get monotonous, you know? So I always flip it from like roots to girl thing. So, you know what I'm saying, just basically party, you know what I mean? I don't really, gun thing is not really my thing, you know what I mean? But I do bad man dub and them something there, you know? So. Because you have to flip it, you know, generally dub style is different than the regular song. That, so then you'll flip it over, you know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then now, what were your moves in school? Did you join any band, any choir, anything musical while you were in school? Well, no, you know, never, never at all. It's really just, I used to go parties. So I had a friend named Kimani Robinson who won RETV and, you know, back then and way back, he used to say to me, you know, cause I used to be around him just flowing freestyle and he said to me, Jay, you know, I think you must take this thing serious. And I'm going to introduce it, introduce it to some friends who was ambassadors this guy who became legend disco with David Mayer and Carlisle Lee, 
who David is still David May and Carla Elise now, Gabriel Selassie from Dubwise. Mm -hmm. So I used to be down there and they used to play a lot of disco because it was more uptown party. So it's a lot of freestyle, Miami freestyle music, plus reggae, Third World and Bob Marley. And, but it was more the freestyle beats I on because I just still love that, which is similar to now, dance hall, which is similar to now, pop music. So it was like Stevie B, Lisa Lisa, and I was like, you know, working out which tone of voice I want to use. So I used to be grimy with my voice, and I was like, nah. And then I get to the one where I say, all right, smooshy, smooshy, come get some, baby, smooshy, smooshy. And then I just end up right there with a the DJ tone for being Jamaican in Jamaica and dance all to make a name, you know? Mm -hmm. And at this time here, you said, okay, what was your first move now to actually get to a studio, to get to a producer? How did you connect that right there? Well, uh, I met a girl named Spiffy. I look up in the phone book for studio. I go like one specific studio and a big artist, not calling her name, runway from the studio. So I'm an uptown boy, I'm a rich already. And so on, so, so I left there, so I got a studio name, new name studio. Mm -hmm. Castro Brown was there. I met Derek Barnett was the engineer the year in this. Luciana used to come there. Ninja Man, Lady Star come there, saying, um, so I made Derek Barnett now play what I did and I dove play it on the flex rhythm, the mad cover flex rhythm with smushy smushy. I make him play the rhythm on let's get it on. This is way before Shaggy. Mm -hmm. I make him play that. So now, in that studio, new name, everybody there was like, yo, your voice, your voice. And then everybody, when Derek playing the rhythm and I working out my flow, smooshy, smooshy. You know, Freddie McGregor walk in. Uncle Freddie said, Uncle Freddie said, yo, my wonder I sang the rhythm, you know. I remember this. I'm going to say, why? What's so big about this smooshy, smooshy? Mm -hmm. Him said, in Japan, when they answer the phone, they say, mushy, mushy. So I was like, what the hell? You know what I'm saying? So it was like, right there now, you know, you used to have like a youth named Sprat where Ninja Man used to roll with, you know? And Sprat used to always outside with me when I was just chilling, you know? And him used to be like, yo, you have a bus, you know? You have a bus. So I'm going to do that song, press it, because I never ever got through that to look voicing. I always have my 24 track, my hear that. I was never just an artist. I was always with my 24 track and them kind of thing that paying musician to play rhythm for me. So that is how come now I start press my vinyl them now and I the smushy smushy. And then dear son now is Spliffy, a girl named Sandy Thompson now. She carried me now and I said, you know what, I'm going to make it meet somebody. And she carried me to Barrio here at Grove Studio, IRFM below IRFM and in there now is when I did my song name. I don't know, did he know, did he know, no. Why my black brother scan them and bow? I don't know, did he know, did he know, no. How the ghetto youths, them, them a flex song. Every time I look around and me say, oh, like you see, it's a man, a kind of man. And that's the tone I was in. So now, that was my reality song. Then I don't want to name I just think body you up for that time around me. Girl, I just think she boy you up for that slot of me. Woman of those three and do that song now. So Barry starts it. And who the shower brown boy, you know? Seeing uh, who is this boy? Uh, and him got some of President Brown in the studio, Luciana, Tanya Stevens, and a gospel group. I don't remember them name, but them was there and we tell them we all do all a song, the same night name, African thing. Me choreograph it and make Lucian present and Mikey Spice do all harmony, you know. It's an African thing, so African people sing. I me I say so. And it end up on Island Records. Yes, is that the song with you and President Brown? Me, I, me and Brown, I. So now that was just dear, so we get the song made up. I never even think so that name go out there. You get me? But Barry on some other level. So I was like, boom, Barry, go upstairs now with the song and give Mighty Mike it for play. Murder me. And cause him have a juggling now, you know? And him put out murder me and, you know, Mighty Mike love it. And I say, yo, John, I love his style. And I send it to Bobby Digital, mm -hmm. you know? 
when I reach town now, I just go down and Bobby Digital meet with Bobby, meet the great Bobby Digital, and go so boom. And Bobby put on a rhythm and a voice. The first, like I said, the first mommy song ever in a dance hall from a DJ. You get me? Me. What was it like meeting and working a Bobby Digital at this time? Because remember, you're brand new in the, early, in the business, you know, boss. Ooh. Um, Well, working with Bobby now, it was just like, no, you knowing that there's some, you know, hierarchy in the thing. You have the producer, you know, because I know was a youth, I do my own label. So it's like, no, I start go to be an artist. So no, Garnet Seed start come. Junior Tucker was there. Shop at him, I come. Me as a little youth be like, I've got this. What is? See? So every day. Some of some us there every day now, every day it coming like this. Some of them buy my box full drive my car and just start, just vibe with the man, the man, the de, and till me start, me got Bobby, they have a rhythm name on the Dembo rhythm. You remember that rhythm, the Dembo, right? All right, and me did do a song named Pressure, Ophi, Pressure, Yeah, Take Ophi, Take Ophi, Take Yan, Ophi, Take Eli, Mad Ophi, Mad Yan, Mad Ophi, Mad, Jump Up, Show Off, and Rug, right? That no, I sprag out this out. Them are going like them, and, uh, like them, bep on top and that, right? All right. So, them time they know me, I sprag out, par and all. That's okay. the name. Ah. Hold on then. So, ah. I'm, we're going to get back to this sprag but I want to know with your thing here, why as soon as you came into the business, you decided to record on your own label also? Did you, did somebody tell you this is what to do, or you just figured this is the best way to do it here? Yo, True Mr. Independent and me know so like top artists them, you know, who are here make it them own them masters and them word there. And you know, my father a lawyer, right away at 16, me have a company, set up my company, you know, give me a bus for buy me 24 track tape, me start book on mixing lab and them place at the top studio them. You see me, I said, down the line, I end up just tough girl, mixing lab, anchor. So everybody I meetings, Uncle Sly, Robbie. You know, D Brown, them, the whole nine yards, me, I see it. So when me, I work, D Brown, I go to have session later and vice versa. So it's like that make me the dust say, all right, you know what? Something different about me. Cause even when I go into the studio, them never yet call me artist. Them say musician, musician, them never call me artist. Yet up to this day, them nobody not call me artist. Mm -hmm. Shit. Crazy. So then that's, and what's the name of your label? My label's name is Golden Child Entertainment. Right now, Golden Child Music and Clothing, because I have the clothing from back then. I've been doing what everybody calling branding now. My first album, Golden Child, with all my hits on it, seeing which I soon put out back again. You know what I'm saying? That was a CD, 245s, a promo picture. A poster, a big poster, a cap, and a t shirt in it for 3,000 Jamaican dollars. At that time, it was 30 US dollars, that equivalent. And I move units. So imagine where me I do. And I drive around the whole island with that and I bust that movement. They said, that no, was what really meant the whole place kind of know me. You know? And even your name, Dan Newt, how did you get your name? Well, going to the dance, them house, Aliyah. You know, Mirage, you know what I mean? I don't remember which club it was in New Kingston, but I remember every time I come out of the car and park and start walk, the youth, them will wash, wash, the, wash the car, tie on the car, them, you know? They always see me and say, Daniel, Daniel, make that thing now, make that thing now, so we can use. So someone say, why you call me Daniel? And they must say, it's all my walk and all my go on and like my attitude, which I guess equivalent to know what you call swag. And it's like, I just say, you know something? I didn't name that to them. Mm -hmm. I'm going to start work with that name that. Because did you have a name before that, that you actually wanted to go into the business as? No, the only difference was it is spelled youth back in the day. Y-O-U-T-H. And I just, I just never like it. It just never feel right. And then I just cut it off because it was really a mistake because everybody used to make mistake. I write it like that. But I really, from ever since they say youth, so I just start drilling the youth in them head, you know? from there crazy and what year did you actually form your record label well oh my goodness from my start like 1994 them time there 
I saw America live at like 16. Mm -hmm. Crazy right there. All right. You were telling me that you met Spraga. All right. How did you yeah. guys connect in the first place? Well, you know, I used to like the arrows, you know, cause I, so I was a piece of the dub. So it's like I did meet him down there and we did there and we usually hang out out of everybody, me and him just catch our vibes. You know what I'm saying? They did have Paned, Paned tech to me all heap. I used name Deja one, tech to me all heap. And when I pull out him ratchet as a man breed around me, you know what I mean? And I used to be like, why didn't you touch it for me so to get to you? Then just love me. Seeing them cut it, some slogan became the uptown get to you. You see what I mean? I said, I had the uptown, uptown one. You know what I'm saying? I had the uptown get to you. So it's like, it's like there's some meat spragger. So one day now, me must say, come in from somewhere early in the morning and I drive for a radio's room. You know? I must see something I walk out of the lane. I am going say, wait, then I spread on that. I'm going to go so them time and I drive a ladder. So I say, yo, where are you going? I say, Ray, 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 I can't tell the story now because it's deep. It was left in somewhere. And so I got some now, boom. And me, me say, yo, me, I got my mechanic later, you know, when me, you can come up on the ends, because me live at Haverdale and I read this road that, I say, you can come up on the ends. And after that, we can go back down a Kirkish arrow side. So I just, you know, go in and we did all the vibes. And from then, we just start rolling. And him did already kind of have cock it up and jack it up on the sound system, them everywhere, you know, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's like, it's like, it's like, you know, it's like we 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 used to just it used to take me to like Dave Kelly and you know Jack Scarpio, every other student, Waterhouse. So we used to make I used to do the driving. You see what I mean? Say, you know, see that's what's all. And that's how you connected with Spraga there. Because you linked with Bobby, you guys did some stuff. You linked with Barry over here. So then after Bobby and Barry, was this when you met Dave Kelly? This is when Spraga introduced you to Dave Kelly? Aye. After that, no. Pentos, no. Spraga say, I'm going to go by, son. You know, I go up there and Wayne was singing outside a Pentos. And I was, he was saying, excess amount of loving. And I was like, them time them I always just said, I have some lyrics in my brain and I sang Jack down and I did have a song say loving X I'm out plenty. See? And him come and I say, you know, say I have a song for fit that. Mm -hmm. And I suck come living excess and we go inside, tell Dave. And Dave start voice besides the first. Now me I work with the great Dave Kelly. So everybody there, daddy screwed them and everybody was there. And it's just, you know, me was like kinda. Get off famous as an uptown youth, and me had the first youth I do it. The first little brown get uptown youth, I got every get on, I said, DJ thing, and I DJ with the youth, them, you know? Mm -hmm. And were they accepting you as the uptown youth at this time here now? Well, a couple of artists always used to, a uh, couple of producers, and up to this day, you get people where just have this thing where them kind of never believe, say, you know, I I deserve because I never struggle or whatever enough. But you don't know his music. You can't me can't tell, you know, you know, Mini Cyrus say she can't sing, you know what I mean? So I don't even watch them thing that none at all. It's like you there are some people where it start out like that, but then when them sister years pass and even the system mash them up and them can barely reinvent, it's like them sister down you stand the test of time him sang up here and him dealt the same way I kick them in up. So we did end up turn good friend and them understand the struggle now, like with the emergence of certain other artists that you know are aiding them career, you know. They get it right there. So all right, so you said you recorded for Dave Kelly, you and Wayne Wonder did Love and Excess. When did you know this song here now started to really bubble for you guys? Blow up, mm -mm. me there mind me now, really. me there mind me now and me a party up you know what it is them back in the day and a party mind me style and my popular so all of the all inclusive party them up here now and there and if I want a DJ, enough girl you know what I'm saying, be a pretty girl, natural ear girl, natural eyebrow, 
everything. You know them time there. And no done up. You know what I mean? Fresh. You know what I mean? Alley berries. And so now, Mr. said, it a mash up the place. I'm going to come and go and get to you one night. I see it a bust the place and it all the number one in Miami. But I said, wait there. Something named Chart to me can get fun. Oh, we get fun. Chart number one. Because that song there, I don't know. Management and a programming. It just goes up. I don't know. It's just, I don't know where that song they do. But I don't know where it do. As that as this, I got it's not my favorite beat. The beat is not me favorite for real. You know what I'm saying? But the composition is very like I don't know what it do, but then Wayne called me up from yard when I was in Miami and say, yo, video you know, that time and nobody had in a video. <laughs> me I said, video? Me I said, what? He said. When they come down, them time the media plan for chill, me say, tomorrow, me just buy a ticket. See, I, I'm flying the artist, this thing I said, come in. So I say, all right. I'm going to go, so boom, left everything, go in. And then it was a work with them time there, Trevor behind them, Ras was it was one of the people there. Kevin Lee was the main person before Ras Casa them. And with, this was one of the first videos of that era. Seeing we are the one that do it. Everybody in that video, Shelly Thunder, Frisco Kid, General Degree, Buccaneer, um, Bujo Bantan as a ballad. Seeing our bad things that video shoot there. And it mash up the country. But up to now, I never see it on YouTube. I never know where to find it. You see what I say? So it's like that video now when we in Sessor now, I know say, come from we in Sessor. I remember a second batch we come out in I you know. We oh, come so it wasn't first batch? No. Yes. Second batch. No fun I look you. Them them song there and excess amount come out same time. It was that is screw them and no other doors. You see me? And then we know. And then Dessa know I know say when I start hear it on the radio so much and I was like, all right. And this I know say I have a hit song. Did you guys start to take on the road together? Anything started to do some shows? What were you guys moves at that time there? Well, boy, everywhere we ain't going, come up on stage and, you know what I'm saying, back in at them time, they like actually a couple of times in Miami when Pentos have showcase, them time it was Pentos showcase and I just go and just, you know, you don't know me, an artist, so I'm there in Miami more and, you know, I'd be backstage and would I say, yeah, come up, come do this song. And I remember the first time I ever do it in Miami, they didn't really touch a stage in Miami. Is way anyone that at Pentel showcase big up anyone that book me? I tell you, seeing and him call me up and say, Yo, I'm gonna come out and him sing the song. And a girl bust up now, sure. I was like, oh, What is it? I was like, Yeah, I get him a liquor jam. What? And I say, Yo, and you know, and him said to me, When him see me, I bust the place, I may have the knee lift. We ain't we ain't got on the mic and say, Yo, Daniel, to come, come on and get the people that want swing, you know. I'm gonna say, eh, I'm gonna go so every woman on the hardcore love up. Then time the hardcore I bust up the place. We just bust it up. And then I start saying, yeah, <laughs> you know. From that point there, have this big song. So did you link back with um Dave Kelly to record You on the Man? Yeah, man, yeah, man. I did link back with Dave. And again, through Spraga car, you don't know Spraga, they have accidental voice. And then Mega Voice accident mega, mega voice, you own the man. Cause me just still have a different vibes and say, yo, she answer back style. I'm a change that. Yeah, yeah. So if you listen on enough of Dave Kelly read him, them just I, I, I sound in it like yeah, yeah, all the time. So I change a little thing. And and that song now again, boy, may I tell you, jam rock them and most of the get us out them when them are now nah, for play them just can you be it from last night? Yeah, yeah, girl can take your one. And then just use it as the pass up side. I was like, yes, another little one. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and what was it like working with Dave Kelly now is you being a new artist, but you, you have a hit under Dave Kelly already. So what was it like working with him? Well, in, in quiet, in quiet and very in dream work. It's like him there, but it's just, you wasn't really nothing where, you know, him done have everybody like already. He's not really, he's like a, like a puffy, like, so it's like, you know, me that do my work and it's not really like I was, 
like in you know, a day every night creating more like how we and uh, Spraga them and everybody else because they mean more like the alias kind of thing so I was like you know really just a you to learn and I got you so it wasn't really like I didn't expect too much and I was just more grateful because I know say okay what's next you know what I mean <laughs> that's it so you were never really official member of Madhouse Crew Never at all. I've, I've, I've never been a member of not reading a lot of Jamaican, like, it's more like just Dan Newton and Benz is more like, you know, more than like it's a red square, you know what I'm saying? Because Spraga really was like me A&R and just carry me everywhere and just make, say, tell me when, yo, we are campaigning you know, away and killing them or whatever, whatever. And me just step on the road and the guys know with everybody. So I saw come get up people all up to this day. When I go to Jamaica, it's just run people, run back on me. Just like me, just dead. Like I'm more big, like a big artist. Same way, it's like it's not nothing changed, though. You know, it's just how I live. You know. And at this time here, did you have any management or people that were actually looking about your career at this time here? No. Well, at that time, it was it was Sharon Burke, Sharon Burke, and doing you know doing she. I don't know how to meet Sharon, but. Sharon was doing management them time then it was me, Papa Sam and Cutty Ranks at that time. Mm -hmm. You know, Sharon used to manage all of us. So he must know all on that from Papa Sam and Cutty Ranks of Bama them. You see me? So me dead about I don't even know what that segment of life is. I'm just a little youth. So I'm like more of a popcorn them time there. Some of us had the honor of you take everything you see them doing now. Yeah. Somebody does share on the dad do that sun splash, like couple sun splash. Well, she carried me to New York, everywhere, Miami, carried me for interviews, you know, on a certain level, make me know what the inner label is, make me meet, you know, people in the industry, like Brandy them and the whole heap of people. So I kind of get a nice, like, introduction to what, like, management do and you know that's she really teach me a lot of stuff so i learned a lot from sharon burke and with the whole managing myself thing you know what i mean because basically i always have my direction and my vision and it's just who can see it with you you know so your thing here you said that you were on some of the early sun splashes what was it like performing on sun splash at this time here and do you remember what year you were on sun splash I really don't remember. I know it's in the dance hall history though. Like online, I can't find it. But I remember doing it with like Adina Howard them was on it one time when I was on it. So you know that time. So you must know, say. So, you know, Sharon used to work in the Sunsplash office. So I was just and I was just there. So I got all the exposure everywhere. So it's like, you know, that time that June I read them up. Uh, Ride up on horse and them Sunday. You see what I say? So it's like you know in my eyes see sometimes I see what I go on now and I be like I hear in the beat and the band and I be like, What what is that? I'd be like and I'd be like, I remember when it was like crazy Junary singing this is the original foreign mind and those things as a little youth, I was like, Wow, the music was like superb, you know. That's big there. And I know um some other people that you linked up with early in your career too was um Steely and Cleavy. Yeah. Steely and Cleavy, that's a good memory. Cleavy especially. Cleavy always checked for me. So I did a couple other songs like a song names named Greatest Girls. And then I did the one with Bushman when much of the world name. Remember the days when people on the east side could go on to the west side and live in peace. Mother of all it, call it 911. Mother, she of all them just the law and son. People got the wrong so People there are, how's the baby big house nice out on the gun well? We don't have to be like that at least this time of the year. Let's live in love and harmony. So everybody take care. You get me? And that that does that blew up the place. But one politics we know and it's just it's like Sharon Forrester, you they have a youth named Scatter. We're singing uh, in a circle now. Mm. And that time that a straight love. You never have 
no ego or who rich and then I just love and vibes and not burn up body in the car and a bleach face the bun up on them something they're never them time that's true love how did you even connect with bushman to come up with that song there at that time there i think it would have been brand new as an artist at this time here now brand new but basically at that time i was like bushman all him son like godfather because he used to come studio down a steel and cleave it with him son you see me i say and then i think more time we spend bushman today so we did us turn bridging and stand um cleavy always i work with me on projects and you know, with like, when trying to cross over, him know how they have that crossover vibe. So, him always know, so me know what to do the rhythm, them, you know? So, him always a reach for me. Him and all that, brother, them do. You know what I mean? So, that was big. So, then linking with Bushman is you linked him over at uh, Steely and Cleavy. That's how you guys connected. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. And that was a big project because I remember even doing a video for that. I don't even know where that video is. You know, I have so much work and performances that I ain't never seen again. It's like reggae secret hidden fault. I would have loved going there to teeth them out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. even this time, did you connect with Donovan Jermaine Pentos at this exact same time here now too? Aye. Uh, so no, working with Dave them now. Penthouse so downstairs is the office and the distribution. So Jeremy, you know I'm Jeremy? And the girl they was I miss with me, all the girls that were there. I was like, I loving them off. I was like, oh my God. I loving them. You know what I'm saying? Cause it's just a happy vibe. So I was like, okay. And so Jeremy did a voice. And me just dead it on me. I hear the rhythm push the door. We said, well, like that, you know. And then that's how I did know the song name, all that glitters. All that guitar say, go on the metal, watch the turf, then to patch Oh, so I know the pondero. Oh, only better have your flex under control. Road boy, what you want, watch your step that you make. Come with your own name early, not grudge, don't stay. Human being are your best friend, fin your motor, your play. You get me, I say? So, as a little youth, I don't even know where them lyrics say I come from, these flow, these nothing is just her vibes. But up to this day, I barely right. You know, it's just, everything is just like, especially now, 10, 15 minutes, because it's more like a vibe. So I always had that. And I, look, and, and I think everybody, you know, kind of saw it in me. So it never was a problem for me if I left from Jeremy and then Tony Kelly would be there and then I meet Tony Kelly. Next level I get. Mm -hmm. in, in, in the legacy, because now doing this, I'm not even the prime time one. But no, I'm a part of many legacies without prejudice, without scorn of generals, not trying to say who must win what or I deserve anything. I'm just doing call. Guess what? The universe say, got you. I'm a dead down there with Tony Kelly now. Who knows start work on Mikey Bennett studio? You getting it now? That was two part? friends, right? Yeah. All right. No. 2B. 2B. Yes. Yes. Right. 2B. So now, down there, so now, Tony Do, the snow, Bujo, Terra, and them, something there. That's all. Right? Okay. So now, Tony said, come on the rhythm. And we go, so now, I say, the girl says she go in, she go in, she gone. Says she want another man for you want to be land. The girl says she go in, she go in, gone. You hear me? So, we start do them song there now and they must say, hold on. All them song they're not even bust right now. If them the plays like new song, it's just take out the rhythm from on that and drop to choppy choppy sets the dance all and it gone again. You understand? Crazy. So you're working because remember you're working with a lot of top producers at this time. Even who did you start working with first? John John or King Jammies? Well, John John. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. John John. Okay. Whoa. John John. No. Hold up. Go. Just going around Jammies. Jammies and me and Spraga. Sometime me and you know Kit Curl. You know what I'm saying? Because me and Corrupt used to make enough move. And then John John would have him read him them in the studio. We was more that age group. So we let us dead there. 
Um, and I think like Ward 21 Suko was like an engineer. Yeah. And he used to just have the reading them same way that a spicy for Jan Jan. Aye. And them kind of way. There's something like that. And it would just so now. Me I we any wonder now end up me about me, me start go at Lanta and start them time there and start know the flow and outcast it up. The Curtis Mayfield song, let me take you on a funky ride. Right? So I said, we and sing this. I'm said, let me take you on a sensei ride all around the world and bring the concept and the singer just sing it. I'm just jump in, vibe it. It wasn't a whole heap of writing. It's just, I just the sis in your truth that make you feel the greatest. So it's like, I will synergy again. So it's like I end up in this big artist league, but I'm still nobody because I'm not that get to you that burst every day. I'm just not that. Mm -hmm. So that's just an invisible stigma where now it try off for me all the time for try. You know, it's just a thing where if it did want something for vex with Dan for from a level of certain moves could I make like, okay, that kind of show, that kind of show, it probably would I get blocked up just for some little pigment on my skin and some little GPS, mm -hmm. you know, points, you know what I mean? So it was like, I never ever studied that. I just, they have to just keep going on. Because I know even with John John, you had voice a song with Spraga. I think it was Gunnock. Yeah, big song. You know, say, more time I could ever remember every time I get some man called for dub for that song there. Big bad gun out. Believe me, more time. Me have to listen back on the song them for remember them. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But Big Bad Gun Arc was a big song. You understand? And, and you have to remember so them time there. You know, at that point, it was just like me you wanna be with it. Management, helping other artists, whole heap. So it's just me you want my money. I spent on studio time. It wasn't, it wasn't really no burden, but I don't even, I just didn't want everybody happy. If I try any food, me I buy, everybody eat. Them way they pick up everybody, make enough move. So it's like, I, I, I would never feel like, I would never feel like nothing, nothing wrong. You know what I'm saying? You know, like with nothing, it's just all about right place at the right time. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, we keep going. No stories. All right. So then you guys did that song there. Big, big song. It was more, was it more like a dub plate song or it was a lot of songs were playing that song in a dance? What, Big Bad Ganak? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like, it's like, the, 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 the more like get to our sounds like jam rock and travelers and, them was whole heap on it and like late, late night stone love. You know what I'm saying? So it never really, in my eyes, really did do Jamaica like how the diaspora sound them would have to it because it was like more names now. So when I come out foreign now, them I say, yo, the new thing with the diaspora, but they not. I mean, I said, which song that? And oh, the one big, but oh, oh, you get me? So everything like after the, rookie productions and the the fat eyes and the those things is really you know just i didn't even know what they were doing is now watching but the stage show them like when you see them pop up on youtube and me show the people them are going on some some masses are screaming out like some and i'll be like that's what it used to go on because i was like I never know. Click, 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 shot, click. I'm gonna don't get in like, well, yeah, yeah, hit. I didn't know. I didn't even know it catch a vibes. I swear. Mm. But when I drive on the stage, check that bus up the gallery. May I say, wait, when are they hear that? Cause I don't like at internet time. You know what I'm saying? So the dance hall that them used to do that time there. Yeah. That, that kind of, you have a level of dance hall. Be it's kind of thing. A fat eyes thing, a two different thing. <laughs> you understand? They have kind of thing. We up as like a German the breed them. And uh, fat eyes is like an independent just trying, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Definitely. Because I know you even, how many songs did you record with Spraga? 
Copperwell, you know? Copperwell. Um, I mean, there's one with you, Spraga. I think Black Pearl. Couple more of them on the Main Street label. That I right. And that's like almost like a red square type of song. Ah, yeah. Lot of my career that time is just all sprung up. Just a direct the vibes and can now me have to get more of the ghetto slang more. You know, the ghetto slang are living down there more and seeing the vibes and kind of you know. So DJ has a tell me some pronunciation, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, like when we say, say proper wonder when he, ah, that one line there, I'll box my box over the mic, man. I'm vexed and never tell me about cool, man. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's because it was like, say proper, it just that one little thing there. And just like pronunciations was different, which no, it end up does, it doesn't even matter. I love it. You know? Crazy. Another name you brought up not too long ago was Kid Corrupt. How yeah. do you meet Kid Corrupt? Well, when me and Jovan meet, well, I don't remember if it's Aras, but I know him, him have some friends that I know to. Well, I used to name Jonathan, and then they have a twin named Jason and Johan, and I used to just be over them house with Jonathan, because them and Jonathan is cousin. So Jovan, who is corrupt, used to come over there, and then we end up, Five J's, got all of us name is two J's and Jovan. You get me, I said Jonathan, the Yohan. So it was like all of us, I would there. I mean, his father, they have a son. So we used to just DJ until me, I drive a lot and me, I have the liquor car, me, I go and say, all right, we got arrows. I would start go on, go on, which back then I was doing most of the voice in him. You know, Jovan was just like there, Corrup was just there, like. Being my vibes, you know what I mean? I mean, I'm not sold in a vibe, so it's like super party, you know what I mean? Like, cause of family, call my mother auntie, me, I call him mother auntie, kind of thing, you know what I mean? So, this was before Dutty Cup days, yeah, man, long before, long, 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 long before, in between Spraga, in the when it's when my uptown now is me and Jovan and them flex them most of the time. Well, you don't know DJ have him world, all kind of thing I go on him. Act. So I don't even know all them rounds. They really got the real late night. You know what I'm saying? You know, so when him had them rounds, I'd be like at an uptown party, I mash it up, I eat another kind of food or just I get my fame up, you know? So it's just like, you know, that was, you never even have no Sean Paul in nobody mind. Not even Sean probably still playing water polo or something like that. I don't even know. Crazy, cause we're gonna get back to that. But there's another part that I want to speak about also with Spectron. How did you get to Spectron? Because remember, you're with Sharon Burke, and then Spectron is like Specialist and um, Babsy Grange and those people. How did you connect with Spectron? Boy, I don't. I think I was just out there and just going, doing my thing, and I was like, I need some pharma management thing. I don't even remember how me and Babsy them thing. They hook up, but it was Miss Grange and me most of the time. And she talked to me. You see what I say? And just as a little youth, I remember Damien and Shia was the shepherds. Um, I remember Haned was on it. I remember Rounded, um, Ghost and Culture. Uh, then they have Cabra, Pacha, Shaba as the top, top level. And then me was like a little juvenile where I opened the show them for shower them in all the sun at when my girl Miami and the sun, me a DJ and them thing, you know what I'm saying? Before they started them, you know what I mean? So I don't remember how I linked with her, but I remember it was a nice period and it was the same love. It was just all the top shows, you know, the management thing, yeah. You know, I don't even know how it done, but, you know, me just, you know, end up doing it with them. What was it like opening for somebody like Shaba? Because remember, Shaba is the mega star at this time here now, you know. And you're, as you say, you're the new youth and stuff like What was that like being in that camp, touring around and moving around and opening up for somebody like Shaba? Well, the couple of dates I'm going to do with him in a them prime day was like, not really the Johnny Gill one them. It was more like the the... Caribbean one them, the Miami one them, probably a couple of New York ones, you know what I mean? And it's like one of the best things ever. I remember Turks and Caicos when I 
first, when we did the first one, and I said, you know, I said, Shower, you know my song? He said, you really know his song. And I'm going to say, I sing hardcore, short, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. And, you know, I was like, yeah. And then I was like, you know what I mean? That was the first time. Then when it's short time, I think it was me in Pacha then, Red Rat. And it was in a park. And I remember, me, me them time, they were free. And then I, I mean, I said, boom, but I was going to do before a shower. I mean, never know. Like I said, I don't know if I sang them at. I just know, so them booking me. So I'm gonna go, so I run out and do this three little song. I say, yo, bust the place, wicked. I say, yo, now come off here. Yeah. I'm gonna say, come off. Seven, so come off. The crowd, I say, send, see where I send, see where I say. So, so I look for a shower and shower, I say, where are you? I say, go out there, go out there. I'm gonna say, boom, I run out. I'm gonna say, boom, I run out. From them words in my ears up to this day, I hear it. And it, you know, then, you know, we learn each other personality. From a level where I never ever remember saying, remember me. I had from then on, every time him see me, golden child, come lick me down up, I'll be to the top, take me to see you. And them something there, you know what I mean? I would just be like, I'm a, I know shower racks, you know what I mean? Okay. So then you even had your label now. Who was some of the first people you started to record on your label, Golden Child? Well, of course, Spraga Benz, you see me? Um, I did have like Luga man. I did have like Massey Kid. I did have like Delhi Ranks. I did have like Lexus. I did have like Anthony B. I did have like Nitty Kochi. I did have like Matt Cabra. I did have like Peeny Man. We moving on now to a good time. Mr. Vegas. Mm -hmm. You see me? First song, la, 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 see? Okay. Tell me how, because I spoke to Vegas, I think it was last year, and he yeah. told me something about it. I want to hear from you how yeah. that song came together with you and Mr. Vegas. Well, Vegas used to sit down at the studio by Freddie McGregor, and I used to work over there sometimes. So the engineer there named Jeremy Ford, he used to be there, and, you know, one day... I go buy some food and me have the big brick phone and Jermaine called me and said, yo, when they come back, you have to hear the youth outside on the reading where you have his in. I'm going to go boom and when I come back, go so and him start sing and him start him thing and I say, yeah, man. And then we go so now and they have a rhythm which was played by, I think it's Jermaine. Yeah, I think it's Jermaine. That was the la 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 redeem you know golden child redeem you know so that's what moving on and you know me and mr vegas song company and we i think we did for sit down and mikey bennett though i did end up go down and mikey voice him and from there we kind of live so close you know what i mean i used to just you know get him go everywhere again kind of say all he wanted to do was go in and studio and I was like, that's it. I must start carrying everywhere. Stone Love, Bobby, everywhere. No management kind of thing. Nothing like that. That's a bridging. A mother worked on the road. You know what I mean? And you know what I mean? So it was just, just feeling a youth when need some help. How did that song do for you guys at that time there? Um, well, at that time, it did some nice stuff because, like I said, it's different segments of the game and I was building a more party oriented from a more like level we are trying to cross it over but if it never cross over I would end up in like Jada Kiss and Mace them category you see me it I wouldn't have to worry about KRS one them you know what I'm saying which is the head of dance hall you know what I mean I was like having our own lane which popular enough for us it, it was more like a building stage of my sound. You know what I mean? And then I would make Liquor John and Paul Lewis, who is the dynamic duo that remix tour, Slam, Wings of the Morning with, with Method Man. They start playing beats and I would bring that. That's how come now I cover them on that beat where I get the beat from Atlanta to change the sound. I was tired of the boop, 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 boop. I was tired of that. I was like, oh. You know, and I used to tell Jeremy them, say, yo, I'm tired of that. 
You know what I mean? That's why I love trap dance hall and sexy dance hall and all these. Af I love them. I embrace new sound. So it's like fitting in. It's like in trying to fit into me. You know what I'm saying? It, it, you turn around the work, how you say it. You know what I mean? So it's like when you reach that kind of level, it's like I start to say, yo, you know, say the game I changed door. You get me? I mean, I said the game I changed in the car. I mean, I see time to the braids, just like how you see the youth, them are dressed on the braids, them. I know you see cartel while I'm here, look on that brown there. You know what I mean? Everybody want the brown and the tattoo now and you know what I mean? All if them that 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 them all bleach and them suck they like I would have paid myself to be who I am, black. I wouldn't pay myself to be who I am, but thank you if that's a colour way on a thing. So it's like the the cabra now said to me, you know, Mr. Cabra. Why is that sound for me now? This is one of my biggest production. This song did it for me on a level like give me a boss. And then when Cabra Vice on the label. Anything for you happen, make it happen and done me now. But from now boy, but from now boy, but man feel them and that give me a boss time was killing it and dog. So the dog help it. <laughs> so so me start sell no 45s of it. And that was when I was like, I'm making more produce some money. Even though if music now go on, I still I make some money where as I look at you to live with mommy, me all right, you know. That's so crazy to even think that you thought so far ahead to actually have a label at such a young age and start voicing people that's been in the game longer than you. With the link with Cabra, was that through Spectrum or you guys had a different link somehow? Well, again, it's just vibing in a problem with Buck Up a Studio. And I probably have my tape on, and I was probably voicing out Anthony B. I need to cut you them. And, you know, the vibes are leak, and me just a try. Sprague a voice on the rhythm, Vegas. Carudina, Carudina, playing on battle. Carudina, Carudina, them sang that. And so, it wasn't really directly me getting more like a puffy. It's I was being like a puffy. I was just having fun, which I still do. You know what I mean? It's just, that's what I love. The, the whole production, merging our sounds and everybody merging together. You know what I mean? So it always work. Anytime I say, Cecil, I want you on a track. Boom. I go down to Steven Ventura and them studio. Scatter the engineer. When me I work a tough gang, Shane Brown are the engineer. Now them people that begin at the game. Baldi from Fat Eyes was the engineer. So I know him a mix to the world. So it's like Lenky, who I play dance all crazy keys. So it's I got to slide. Say so slide, play this. Do that, do that, do play this for me now. And, 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 and. I don't even bring that body sound to it. I got my mouth say, and then him go so. I know him already, and him doing like a thing. Then him say, I know me play that part there now, Lenky. And him call Lenky and Lenky go. And, 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 and. From then, I mean, I like you to watch all of this. That's so crazy to even think about that, boss. You understand? You and yes. Senior now. You. So then how did Dutty Cup form? Because you said you did voice Daddy God. You did voice all these people. No, no, I didn't voice. I, I didn't voice Daddy God and Chicken. Mm -hmm. Was a really in that voicing segment yet. Mm -hmm. I don't think I did get to run because I was... Nearly like from the same neighborhood who them and corrupt par mm -hmm. and corrupt and dirty cup more par. I was really there because I was with Spraga. So when them they up a Jeremy Hardin or wherever, them link up standpipe or wherever, I would be all over and then I would just come up to Jeremy. Mm -hmm. And then that's so like fearless rhythm. They wouldn't easy. I was the first person voice on that. Mm -hmm. they, then on the playground with him, the first person voice. Cause if me never voice, Spraga would own voice. Jeremy would not think about no man cabra. You get me, I say? And them something there. It's my dance hall street influence, the ghetto uptown side. I mean, no, we have that. So that dues they paid, they could just take that blood there and bust with it. You get me, I say? So I was the blood. I am the blood of enough young artists. I am the blood, you know? How did you connect with um, Jeremy Hardin? Well, I just know him long time, me and his brother and the parties that we go on. 
I heard he came back from Toronto and he started in bring Pro Tools and so somehow went up link uh, probably checking some girl, you know what I mean, in the same circles, parties, whatever. And you know, he knew that I was doing something. So him know I was musically inclined on a certain level and I angled while he was just coming in. So like if he would have a rhythm and him play like pack, 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 I'd say, Jeremy, put one more. Pack, 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 pack. You get me? And that kind of thing. So it wasn't just always DJing. I'm never just a DJ. I'm never just a DJ. That's corny. Being a DJ is corny to me, really. And it's just like a lot of people don't know. If I'm not singing, I'm mixing up the melodies and trying to get to the musical part to connect to the words, to make it more of a song, more like how trap and them Afrobeat, more production full, where when you're done, get the melody, play around the melody, so you end up more clean bandit and could post Malone and the top song. I was always for that. Come over, the, that go, go with my voice. You get me? To try and make it into a song. But that was the hardest thing. But it reached a stage now where it is. So I, I love the business more now than ever. Right. No. Linking with Hardin and all that good stuff there. So yeah, as I even asked you earlier, how did Dutty Cup form and even Sean Paul come into the fold now where you guys are connected? Well, Dutty, Sean, father, asked me to help him. You know what I'm saying? For, he was in a barbican, he was in a one taxi, and my, my brother said, DJ, somebody shouted the name, so my gun, he was in a one taxi, lay down. I don't know why I'm doing a one taxi, I lay down. But he said to me, yo, are you named Daniel? I said, yeah, he said, well, me named God Enriquez, I may have a son named Sean Enriquez. We said, yeah, I'm going to go school with Sean. Well, he's doing music, you know, seeing? And that time there, I did kind of know, but I never know. And he said, I was working with Catcore, and he said, Catcore thing good, but in here, he means the uptown ghetto youth, means the youth who know to get it to the ghetto, which is what you need to be a dancer at highest. So somehow he asked me, and I said, you know, well, that's nothing is my friend anyway. And from then, I kind of take a different kind of vibes. I would start, we Kim do ever know this. And I start keeping parties and he would pick, pick me up in him VW van. If I want to move like liquor, extra liquor for move. And Sean and me, they them liquor move there. You know, go a couple of studio. Sean, they was the one who more they want advice than everybody else. Read really. it. Mr. Vegas, work ethic. Top more than everybody else. Mr. Vegas have the most work ethic I ever see as an artist. Sean Paul have a different vibes. I never get to really see no fight, but working with Sean Paul, you know, that was really how I work with him. Father asked me for help. That's it. So it was the two of you guys, and then you already know Kate corrupts. So then how did the whole all of you guys now form? Or were you even really a part of Dutty Cup? Were you an Never. affiliate of Dutty Cup? Never, ne I was just an affiliate. I'm just somebody where, like, like where, you know, Biggie probably is to the lax. It's like, that's Jovan thing. That's Lika Caesar, them friend. You know, really. And Sean is my schoolmate. So it's all, I can't say me and Lugaman, them did par or nothing. The way I know how them flex are the slang. But I know we used to link at the studio and it was, I was always just chilling. You know what I mean? So I, I just was like moving at God's speed, they call it. I move fast. So, you know what I mean? That, it's like me and Sprague on some next thing. You remember, I had to be enough places, you know what I mean? So like then when them I build and I build some new floor, you know, like bust the, the black bucket with the red on the top and the wall of them floor there, that's their segment of us. I never really helped with that. I was more just like a, get to the studio, get to the ghetto kind of bus. Ideas if we're sitting down, because I always I create something for somebody. Yo, I think we should uh, and do that thing. But other than, other than that, everyone, I admired all of them style, especially Jovan, especially Mr. Vegas. You know what I mean? I admire them style. So it's like, that's, at, that's one point, at one point, was it you, Sean, and Vegas on the road together as Lincoln? Well, I was really just booking some little gigs, like if me I go Miami and I'm on, you know, like Mix 96, them Butterfuck or them, they have some little party party. But just call them know me, so them would have just, me that just book a show and say, all right, 
me I bring Luga and Vegas. You know what I mean? And then the next time me I bring Sean, Massey, would I be there with Luga? And next time I would I do our next show. And then I was just the one with the dynamics. So by then Sean they have a little thing, but it wasn't really all up into performing kind of thing. It wasn't really his part of the thing that. So me used to have that dynamics that would just run out and just bust off them face with the hardcore kind of dance all, you know? Because I remember Sting. I think this was a Sting in 99. All right. That is me book that show. I never ever rehearsed. My book that show there from Mr. Leng for Sean and Vegas. So me there, my man, because Rough Cut always working me with Shabba them and most of the show. Them done know my set. So now, when we come back now, it's a vibes like, it was like, the performance kind of did feel weird to me. And I was like, hold on. You know, if you even look, I was like, hold on. You know, some of us say, all right. I mean, I said nothing about that part anyway. And right, this and now, you know, I was the one giving Sean him money, you know. But then, you know, right there, so was another little vibes again. You get to me, I said, so sometimes it's just, not, you know, some people just never did understand certain things. But I know they know by now. You know what I mean? So it's like, that is all them get to show them. I used to be the manager then of that, the booker, the, the put visa in a man book, Mr. Vegas first fly, I mean, fly him out, put thousand dollars in him and him, when this year, I'm going to know i Me can talk. Me can talk. You get me, I said. So. so I guess because your father being a lawyer, you had some sense of business and you understood how to put things in place from early. Yeah, and I, I really, I just know so everybody want a break in life. And sometimes, naturally, in your blood, you see a youth are struggling and a dream, it just help them. You know what I mean? So, that's what really keep the business alive. Smokey Robinson, Bus Diner Ross, Diner Ross, Bus Michael Jackson. And it keep going on. So now, sometimes, I don't have nothing to say. That's why reggae, not really so, and dance are not really so, like, Taken as something where, you know, nobody can come into it and take what they want out of it because them see that there is a empty spot with it because nobody not pulling on nobody. You know what I'm saying? Like, so that's where I always gonna stay. I always gonna be trying to, to help some artists. You know what I mean? So it's like I didn't even know what it, what I'm doing. You know what I mean? So, like I say, I'm the blood. And the blood. You were the link to the link. So it's basically, it was you inadvertently put Sean Paul and Vegas together, basically, because I remember after a while they started recording songs and all of those. Ah, until, yes, until some fallout gone and, and, and them something down one bag of things. I don't have nothing to know about that. That time of the business, that's now the blood. It's when you're, you're wrongly, the blood you get wrongly used. And certain entities come in, you're going to get a country of greed, greedy artists and people warring for limelight. And, and then when they heard it start and people that said, you bad mind him, you bad mind him. I just be like, come on, how can Mr. Miyagi bad mind Daniel's son? If it wasn't me, he wouldn't even get a girlfriend. He couldn't even win the tournament for the girl like him off. So I don't even put myself right there. So, you know. And that's them did always I try make that part of the dirty cup story part of mine and i can't take the youth them glory all i do is take them go story i know my voice sound like super cat you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. you know mine more shabba and i know me and them roll every day is me and spread events so it's not like say you know i even have nothing to really even critique about them but i know say right no them really need back some of them back in the day energy there because the greed eat them up you know what i mean so it's like, when I said greed, I mean greed to say I accomplish. You know what I'm saying? So I don't really throw a word on people because I know so nobody can dissect it like me. You know what I mean? I know because this is not no shabba and no bringing nothing. This is the new era when Sean Paul change reggae and get more airplay than Bob Marley ever get. And then a simple thing that mean I'm like, you see, and both coach then. I bring one a dance hall, top striker. Me proud of that, me talk it every day. It's like them, they want me hold my mouth and 
You know, Mr. Vegas, he's one of dancehall game changer. He's still there in the days of great. I help greats. That's a big thing. That's a big thing. I, you know why I help greats? Mm -hmm. Because greats help me when I found who I am and greats understand me. So this is what reggae dancehall need to talk about. It's all about this, the, you know, Oh, I'm here now. Sometimes you have to take a step back. Puffy have to do bad boy reunion. If I have to call me, it's not here. What call him? I make it do a show, dog. Just for the people that memory. So sometimes you're not. You're trying to go on like you is the start and the end night. So you're crucifying the blood. How can you crucify blood? And blood is what is special in worship and sacrifice. You can't, you can't crucify blood. Got you. I'm going to, this, this is, this is something where this is now an artist that you linked with. That's a completely different artist than dance hall. JC Lodge. How did you connect with JC Lodge? I think you, you recorded two songs. One was on her label or her husband produced it. And one was on your label. How did you guys connect? Well, that's Bob's, you know, Bob's, you me do a song for Rast Records with our name live and active. It activate me. Stimulate me, give you what you got to do. Jeff, crazy. I'll be talking because I want to do it. And then we had me a deal it as a little youth, 18, 19. And from then, JC and, and our husband just take to me. So I always say, Yo, I want voice in you know, a JC because I know what to do with them vocals. So I'm going to go, boom. And then after that, Rust Records one, now I bring her on my Genesis medley rhythm scene. And then she, Give her the beat to make her right. I didn't have to tell her anything. When she done, it's just a vibe. So that's how we did link. And then she did the one for me name, Rukumbine. I would try a couple of them. And I mean, I was growing in my production sound also. You get me? Mm -hmm. So it's just a thing like that. So that's how I link with JC. Yeah, because that's a, that's a different level altogether. You know what I mean? Because JC Lodge isn't your run of the mill reggae singer or anything. This is, she's a different type of singer altogether. Like a dancer, Sade kind of thing, our thing. Different, a reggae Sade. And I mean, she does classics. So even them time there, I mean, Telephone Love, them did done a bus up the place. And now she was kind of crossing over. Mm -hmm. You feel me? into another Rass Records and all they trying to get over. You know what I mean? And I was right there again. So every time when something trying to break open, it's so hot and I catch it. Like Little John and Crook music, which now is trapped. You feel me? It's like I was right there. So we're, we're about to get there. Don't worry. There's a couple more in Jamaica before we get to the States because the States is a whole different chapter yeah. altogether yeah. you understand you know. trust yeah. me <laughs> all right another connection this is this is somewhere in your career earlier in your career too was stone love because i know you recorded another song again with spraga Carl. i think it was give me the nanny for um stone love how did right. you link and how did you guys come up with that song there well that no that song no was me and javan kid corrupt the real have a double it where I was saying, I did that one. You give me hood stood, body stood, over, they good, good. And then we go, give me the nanny now. And Jovan did come in for HMV. Big things, yeah, just cock her up, chuck her up, give her a good work, turn her back. And then that hit. So now, when we go out now, me and Spragat now, we always used to like medley on the stage. So we end up just I sing it. So any which way you look at it, Spragat does perform on the song with me. I would just make it a combination for Father Paul. You know what I'm saying? And I saw come that song come about. It was a song that was on a dub plate before, and then Spraga does do it with me. And it ended up just being a vibe. Just a, how do you even link with Paul in the first place? Mm -hmm. Father Paul, well, it's just like Rory really helped bust me now. Okay. Rory, so when I did start with dance, I Rory usually give him inch of them about the uptown new to run to run with to the ghetto crime like dance and music and them something there and I bust for sang them. Father Paul just take to me. So me and Father Paul turn like me's like a little son one at a time. You know what I mean? So him just call me for everything, you know what I mean? I usually deal with different. So 
I just saw my father post there. You know what I mean? I whenever we see Rory or cancer, you know what I'm saying? It's a different energy. You understand? Yes, I just saw my father post just by being around so much and it was just love, you know? Because you recorded a couple of songs well for Father Paul. Tell us how for Father Paul again. I do remember, and I remember, give me the nanny. Mm -hmm. And then, bad man for who? Yeah, yeah. Bad man for them, mom, but not for you. I like them, but I watch them program. I was them, I got that bad man for them. Who could never be me? Call one wrong, move on the name, but it was bad man for them. I don't, I don't remember the hook. I don't remember nothing else. Mm -hmm. So I just saw, saw because that phase again, like I said, it, it, I did that phase it out and then, you know, get, getting into the journey in the pre thing again, that did kind of help. Just make me get a little quicker retreat, you know? Okay. So then this is what you did all this great stuff. Did you put out an album at this time when you were recording all this music at this time here now? Well, I never really put it out with no big distribution. I was still independent. Mm -hmm. So it was just like vinyl and selling like that. So, you know, and I was just moving units, no charts, no nothing like that, because that was just the system part of reggae. So, like I said, even when I did the hat, I wouldn't know. Cause it wasn't for you to know. You know what I'm saying? It's for you to, if you don't have management, you're not going to see it. And if you have management, they will catch the money for you. You know what I mean? So it's like, that's why I say a lot of artists know from the nineties, it's hard for them to even get the right kind of packaging and bookings. You get, you get what I mean? I say, because everybody's scattered and there's nobody that really know that's the core. You need to build them back together. You know what I'm saying? On a level where package them, you know what I mean? So it's just a time like that where the, the aftershock is no, you know what I mean? So. Right there. One name we didn't bring up in this conversation at all, but I'm pretty sure from you said arrows, you're in the nineties and all this stuff here would have been baby Wayne. Baby Wayne, Bridging. Bridging a studio, Bridging everywhere. Mm -hmm. You know, all our friend. And matter of fact, baby Wayne by all I think I am a ring or one of my chain them from me after we get shot with a sell all and majority of them. And I think I did just sell him on power, man. Something, you know what I'm saying? It's my bridging like that everywhere, but it's just a star, star, baby wind. You know what I mean? Do you remember one story in particular with baby wind that you'll never forget? Either something he said to you or incident, something with baby wind. No, no. Like bad? No, no, not bad. Like, uh, like, uh, you guys are holding the vibes, a story he told you, he was voicing a song, something that you remember about baby Wayne in particular, that would never leave your mind. Well, basically it's just, just the way I'm delivering lyrics and the same whole dynamics on stage mm -hmm. is like, like no other, that's the body language and I'm feeling out him hand and that's the same thing. Him just is a was just a whole different thing. It's like him is at all time what cartel is now. Far before him time, you know, full of lyrics. You know, so right now on all these easy trapper beats and him would have been killing it. You know what I mean? So it's so I look at it still because I know it's just really if you are an artist, you shouldn't be fighting a musical genre. You're supposed to know if you, you know, find some way to fit on it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that was baby Wayne thing. Anything me, me know your friend, you know your friend. Them sang the voice all three different rhythm. Back then we used to voice all sang three time. You know what I mean? So feet for keep up in the juggling. You get the message? Mm -hmm. So them thing that baby Wayne teach me and power man them and penny them. You know penny Harry and the order them. You know. So you were in that link there with the whole, because again, from you say arrows, there's arrows, jammies, black Scorpio, you're in the dub plate circuit. So you're moving around with all these artists right here. Right. Time there. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You understand there. Did all this right. great stuff right now. You did uh, voice a lot of stuff and all of that. When did things kind of slow down for you and you kind of moved to the States? Well, 
when I realized that nobody was really putting me on the rhythm them and you know, it's just bare, you know, like friend so 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 when me say, you know, me, me like when like when Sean them start get more management and thing. And that little time I did just say, you know what? When I start got interview and me I hear say me say and this I just did a hang out with them. So I was like, what's going on? And then I just say, you know what? Now yeah, breeze up, go Atlanta, figure check a girl. And when we go, me they have a song named Tadata, a booty cat walking on the street, booty cat for Jan Jan, as I remember. Yeah, mm -hmm. and Licka Jan was on the radio, V103 Atlanta, and he must play that song. And Paul Lewis was there, and him didn't know somebody would know the girl. And him saying, Licka Jan telling him, like that song, then would I love to get this artist on the source of death, bass all stars with my boo, what him did, Affimate Goal to stay on Sosa Def as a A&R and with no name artist to make it gold. So him said, yo, you know, he's here. I know how to get in touch with him, you know. Just like that, that happened. And my voice for the Sosa Def's first album, not a single, because the whole thing was an all-star, so it's regarded as a single, you know. So anytime my boo play, everybody get paid. You see what I say? So it's like I was getting a new um introduction to some money now for my work instead of on a run my way for free now advise me trying to blackball something that's the blood and then i come off Jeremy the pre with the brat them i escape them i hug me up every day and brat them i was like wow what a prison them put me in and that was like the start of a new bloody heaven you know what i mean because now them start feel more my pain than what it wasn't really my color because in america it's not no skin tone it's just either your hood or your bushes or your street it's not really no nothing about the uptown downtown you not really hear that so it's kind of more my thing and then from there little john link now let me know everybody in the dirty south and i guess at this time here south was really just popping popping at this time here now popping popping like like escape you know what i mean the brat crisscross like i mean it's like i drop in at the mecca the thing when it just a bill so i get a nice little run you know kind of like how drake get popcorn that little run there so me i learned that from then me know that feeling there so it's just a feeling really diana ross you, you know what Rihanna is feeling. She know what a million people screaming is. You know what I mean? She know what a record deal is. You know what I mean? So it's just understanding the generation gap is the key. The focal point always in my mind, you know? So at this time, was this the only, was that the only song you'd recorded with Jermaine Dupri at that time there? That was really the, the first song I did for Soul So Death. And then when that go goal now, them call me back, pay me more and everybody else more cause it went. Remember, no name, I said a no name artist got goal. See? So now I'm getting the volume two. And then I did a song with Uncle Al where them shot in him head down at Miami. The DJ Uncle Al was saying, There's some hoes in this house. There's some hoes in this. Them big Uncle Luke boy there. So me and the legendary Uncle Al of all booty song, dance all booty me had up. Mm -hmm. Them music, them and the Sami. I was experimenting with generals long time, so I love it. Mm -hmm. You know, and that Zika Jan was always telling Jeremy, yo, shoot down its video, the dance or booty music, dance or booty music. JD never see it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But John did always see it. You know, put John always carry me everywhere, getting me collabs, you know, make me know Jazzy Faye, Sierra, Bobo. Bo, and so I have features with so much of them. So, okay. So features, who did, did you work with Sierra and stuff like? Well, I never really worked with Sierra, but our producers, Noontime, who is Jazzy Faye and Nooney, who put her out. So I was working with them on other projects. You know what I'm saying? Like Jazzy would work with Dallas Austin. Dallas would probably want Beanie on something. That Jazzy would say, use Darnute, you know, he cheaper. And he bad, you know what I'm saying? 
And I would get, that's how I get my Usher remix. You get me? I say official remix, get my money. So sometimes we drop off a dance on shoulder. I'm that one. My love catch it. You know what I mean? But then now people want me in the forefront. You know what I mean? So it's just like little John is the basis of my foreign links, like even to A condemn and how it flap it wings going over everybody's segment uh there it is out. You know what I mean? So even with this, so then you would basically migrated full time to the States at this time here now? Well, full time trying to go down to try and just see if the cool off was not none. It was just getting very carny. You know what I mean? Just being like, you know. Don't know what's up, who is who, you know what I mean? And I was like, you know, I remember just going pressure, getting on these features, car one, I've been on one goal album, paying me more than I've seen a dance hall. And that's so crazy, because remember, you're you're playing around in the States, you're linking with Little John, Jeremy, and you're and all of them. And then mm -hmm. if you're trying to go back to dance hall, remember now, even if you haven't reached a pinnacle of the pinnacle, you know that there's a different set of money out there right now. When you're mm -hmm. dealing with the hip hop people, then so then for you to now go back to dance hall and still get an issue, it's like, buddy, I'm over here because this is where the real money's at right now. Yeah, I mean, it's like everybody kind of tastes the money of it, you know. But again, not everybody going to be a legend in music. I not everybody going to have sound spin 26, 27 years. That's something you can't ask for. It just got to be. That's anointed. So, you know. When it, I'm never going to try and cross over nothing or I was never not even only dance all. I was, I'm always going to be an artist. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I don't even look on it like, oh, some people fighting to be this dance all thing, which build a stigma that is not even real. You know what I mean? And that's kind of why I say, sometimes I just say, yo, you know what? I don't even name myself a kind of artist, which a lot of people know that I'm not just a regular dancer or artist. I know what to do. That's why people like you, we for to them can link me. All these people can link me for different projects because them know from I hear that musical composition, World Hop, which is how, which is, World Hop is basically Afrobeat, dancehall trap, the change of music. It bounces in from different parts of the world, but it's not hip hop reggae and it's not reggae hip hop is a more pop thing and it reached there right now say so right where it's supposed to be music crazy in this time was it when you linked akon or this was a little later on well at this akon a little later on you know when akon just come out of jail and it was over by, by one of my friend's studio where he duplicated CDs and stuff. So he used to have a little mastering kind of thing around the back. So Akon was there and I never ever knew him. Then I just meet him and my friend introduced me to him and he was there with his brothers and we were there and I was just vibing and he was playing some music from a dot and saying he dumping some tracks. So I was like, dumping? He said, no, give me them three beat their brother with your hook on them. He said, me dumping? Yeah, dump that? And I saw me get old mama with him. I saw me get this boy here, which him use my yard hook. I sing it in a pop, right? I get it in a the love songs movie for MTV with Monica. And then the song when they work, that thing, baby. I make me see how you sing it. That thing, baby. That's where those three from here can dump in tracks. So this was all a chance meeting with Akon. Well, you know, I'm just going to do something. When you said, no, nah, man, because you had the vision. You said, listen, I know what I could do with these here. Aye. And then from there now, every day we start link. Me go pick him up or him come pick me up. And I everywhere with them, me and Convict, I break sub sandwich, chop it in half. But at everywhere me there, over in my apartment, you get to me, I say, I just, him, him didn't need me have much. Him just a deal with music. And then they have a brethren named Divine Stevens, where he used to teach choreography. And it's him now. Then they have upfront records. And I saw come now his studio here. So right in the next dance studio, you have Monica, Jagged Edge, 
um, all of that. that. So every time, and then, so every time I am doing something, you have people that are doing something. So the features just keep coming because they're hearing what's going on. So if I work in Patchworks and set me working here, some other people from all out of town, 36 Mafia, whoever, in there, and then them turn up the music and I mix out the door all open, them going to say, them going to say, who is that in there? That's what them going to say. Yeah. So even TLC, when did you connect with TLC? And what was well, that like? Well, connecting with TLC is not really directly through them one time. Mm -hmm. It's more like Dallas used to be with Chile, and I was around a lot of that. You see what I say? And then left I know is who I would have more be around. One of my producers, Cool Rock, used to work, was one of our main producers. So I actually did that song with her that week when she, she voiced and leave to go Brazil, mm -hmm. that song they will come out. Nobody can look their song that song again. That's it for that. That's the TLC move I made. And that was it. Um, Lisa go away and just drop out. And that was a big thing for me. And I just got so, and everybody just got so, that was a big thing in the Atlanta music industry. You know? mm -hmm. I've been really doing a big thing, you know. Nobody can look back for nothing. So I just get jump up in at that. Crazy. So you were actually around her at that time? I right? work in our house, in our house, the kitchen right there. Rashida and Kirk from Love and Hip Hop pay me for crazy um, features and up in them house. Kirk is uh, Rashida is my friend. May I go call Curry Chicken? And then something in them house, they make a son. And then with everybody, it's just a, I have a love in the world, that's why I'm the golden child. I'm the blood. So people might not feed the blood, you know what I mean? But everybody loves me. But it's like the way I meditate and dissect it, it intimidating because it's the right way. Mm -hmm. And sometimes politics and link don't really want the right way. Some of us love it because over over the a period of time, I see that the 90s thing keep me so much alive also that I always have room to reinvent. So that's all the 90s really did for me, was give me a room to reinvent. Because 90s is such a classical and pivotal moment for music in general. So from your, in that block there, you always get a chance, as you said, to reinvent yourself, because people always would look out for you because they remember the 90s and what happened then. Right. Yes. You were in Tinder. How long were you in Atlanta for before you moved to... Miami now. Well, I was in Atlanta for about like about six, seven years. And and it was like it was like starring it up. Starring it up. So it's like when I when I really get my deals like the first deal i get was with tony mercedes with the work that thing the, the same acorn song yeah work that thing tony mercedes who the whoop there it is who there it is you know and them song there who who start la face with baby face and Eddie hey, reed him tech to me saying and him same one that project my ex-manager used to be his assistant and she Get me there, him start with a single, then it ends up an album. Then him start carrying me to the R and R music conference, then which is so rhythmic and cardinatic. So I'm at the words in music. So now I perform with Beyonce, I perform with Tyrese, I perform with music soul child. What am I? I'm, I'm on the amateur night when them hear me doing my show tape for the for, for what you call it, warm up, seeing for the show. Rehearsal, seeing the, the woman say, what is he doing? Who is, whose music is that? She never even know it. I have a song named Stop Effing With My Love. Seeing I told the Mercedes, an R&B song. Seeing And she said, who is this? He's supposed to be on the real night when BT is here and Beyonce. You see me? So they put me upon the rookie night and me a rehearse. And them just dash me off of that. And put me in at the real thing. So that's what dance all do for me. They make me start back rookie and nobody don't believe me. That's crazy there. You understand? Nobody believes me. My life, imagine living a life and nobody believe that I am me. 
Yeah. Now, man, your life again is just so crazy. Again, what you see, a lot of people will the big song that a lot of people would remember is um Love in Excess with you and Ray Ray. But yeah. the catalog outside of that bus is freaking oh. crazy. Crazy. Okay, but I you notice you bring up some song and believe me, when we if my try count I over a thousand song when we can tell they can play. No. Some of the song them that people loving like all the time, when I tell them it's 12, 15 years old, them saying, this should I play now yesterday. I don't even have to look back on that because I still love all my new album, the way the love weight I get. But I say, yo, thank you, 90s. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you get it. So you did your six, seven years in Atlanta. Why, why, why Miami? Why not probably like New York or somewhere else? Why there in particular? Because it's saturated with the greed and the politics again. And the Clyde Ness, where the same people on the shows every time I start living in the cities and I'm tired of seeing my own friend them. But tired of them. Because it couldn't be. That means that the industry not formatting the shows right. The generations, the like how you can now have a new edition, Anthony Hamilton, you know. So I am going to do those things as much as I can because most people who surviving now in the 90s, they are only thinking about them. So them alone cannot do it because the 90s was an era like us. R&B and soul, 90s and 80s, 70s was an era. The Delphonics is an era. So when they're doing shows, they book those people. You got to keep it going else they're going to kick you off of the charts because they see that we don't know what we're doing. You understand. How did you connect with Slip and Slide Records? Well, as I, as I said, Greg Street in Atlanta, who, why I was there so long living, a big real personality named Greg Street on V103. I met him through the trad interviews from Sosa Def, and him just take a liking to me. Him help bus, bus everybody, Master P, Rick Ross. If you're anybody right now, yesterday I'm with Little Dirk and then Monday. Him is top. Him with him and Steve Harvey, them, him help bus Steve Harvey. So, him take to me. I was like, okay, him says, stay here. I'm going to get you and do one day. Watch. And I stay there. I struggle with, and then me signed to Little John BME, the first artist to sign to them. And then him sister them check for me. So it's like a little circle. And then him start get me on the radio and adopt it like Thugs Bone and How Many Crossroads. I would do smooshy, smooshy on it. And he would put it in and it would go number one and in top six at six on major radio. See? And that's how the whole Atlanta start knowing me. And then everybody, down, down, yo, we need you. And then I was killing those features, just getting that money, getting that money, getting that money, you know? You know, and, and that's it. That's it. And just spreading my name. And he, you know, called me one day. I was in Miami. And him called me. I said to me, Dan, go to Slip and Slide for your deal. I was like, where are you talking about? I got a deal with you with Capital from Slip and, with Slip and Slide. So I was like, okay. He said, go down there. So I got down there, and then I got down there, and it was like one big, yo, you're the savior. You're the savior. Because they was really doing bad. And I mean, come get them $2 million music and movie deal. And I can't tell them how much me yet, but my thing, one of the biggest reggae deal them. Because at this time, I think the two main acts on Slip and Slide would have been Trick Daddy and Trina. Mm -hmm. Aye, and then Ricky Ross was just coming up, and then you have a producer named Jim Johnson, where boss Pretty Ricky, if you if you read film bio, him, and he's him producer Lollipop, when he might work with me in the studio down there, the man, the man does I got crazy, and I said, Dan, you give me goosebump, I work with reggae artists before, but you, is him produced B.O.B., remember Aeroplanes? Mm -hmm. Ah, Jim Johnson, re him in the Vibe magazine, I said, Don Youth, when him little way did come in the day to get the lollipop track, and me a voice, me remember, and Jim was telling me, again, goosebump, I was a voice, a song named, on top of the world, I'm going, ain't nobody gonna hold me down, No people, this to talk without knowing, capital them song, because I saw them work, Dr. J send me, Timbaland them send me, and it's which me, the labor one, gear car. I didn't want the Timbal and the Dr. J beat, but them said too expensive. <laughs> so I was like, what the hell they are talking about? But anyway, so that gone. So I was always 
there when I get the link to send me there on that level. So I will just go to Sponside and from then, video games, stylist, sponsorship by John, sponsorship by Pony, vitamin water, and then I know what is this world? Who am I? Hey, wake up. And then that's just living. Mm -hmm. You know, I may I eat my food. So even if may I get robbed or whatever, which I, I don't even look at not like that. I, who are, I just took on it as exposure that I couldn't get for myself. Mm -hmm. You know, I just took it as a learning experience and move along. And but I I know I'm that quality where it's not just dance all. That's crazy because I know one of your big songs that came out of that deal there was Row the Boat with Ying Yang Twins. All right. Because in that video, it's Trina. She's at the, she's in the beginning, and you all had her speaking patwa, a little bit of patwa at the beginning of the video. How did you guys put that together there now? And even that song with Ying Yang Twins. Well, Mr. Connie Park Smurf, mm -hmm. that produced Ying Yang Twins, all of them Salt Shaker, him Boss Hurricane Chris, Soldier Boy, him, him and me is good brethren. So, him always, I sat down, I read you. And him always met my feature and him doing them like if him have a new group. So now Yin Yang was in group that was my the place. Him say, yo, we got to do that dance all booty thing again. Because now John and them is one link. Luda, Chris, John, him, Jazzy Faye, all of them. So I, they were just circulating me down around the thing. So so when him, when him, when him draw for me for that song, no, Yin Yang have salt shake and them act. And me assigned to Capital. You see me? So right there now, we get on the Pepsi tour and do a little two date with Ying Yang Twins with that. And then the video time now, they fly down Pitbull, Little John, Eric White, big video. So I was the one that said to them, let's put her in the, the start. And I said, tell her what I say. Yo, you're the road about in Jamaica. And them go, son, it's me. You know what I mean? And that song, the number one in a eight different city, North Carolina, especially most like, got up on that. Mm -hmm. And this is again on the dance hall scene. Everybody thinks that Dan, you just disappeared, you know, boss. While you're doing these amazing works in the states, you know. Yes, yes, and it 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 never hurt, you know. It was disappointing for dance hall. Cause I guess so. I never even feel for tell them because so much controversy in the media about me and this this friend and these artists that up the whole of the money. To run the world right now and for years and don't not to heal the world is like i'll just say yo you know i'll leave them alone because if i try to publicize it somebody might knock it down and mm -hmm. they might say i show sure enough because i heard one big producer said when i get my when i when i came in the start that i got my gold record this time before i'll shaggy them yeah me so them said damn you to go on like i him alone can get gold record this time i didn't even know what a gold record was it's little john called me and tell me say mail it me my gold record we not buy plaque we not buy itunes label send me that so me don't know about this buy itunes chart plaque thing you get me it's a different honor what's in the game you know what i mean so i'm good in you know myself so it's like more time, all these works are going. May I work with Willie Linda, them with Sugar Mine at them. Cash get in there. Don't worry. Don't worry. Get in there. Mm -hmm. All right. So, may I tell you, say, that was what it do. It just make it hard to go to work. Mm -hmm. It don't make me sit down and cuss nobody, but rare, rare, rare. It just make me know, say, all right, that door they lock up, that roof they cement off. May I crawl through the window? Just like that. And did you actually put out a full body of work on the um slip and side capital deal there? Well, them get slip and side get about four or five release date car. Capital was really who really, 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 really loved me. The big, 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 big boy at Capital. Him said me had the best thing him signed since Beastie Boy 15 years ago. That was 2005. And it said our next top boy come to say, uh, oh, this mm -hmm. scene. So again, don't vex, but Make your ass and I get break and the big love. And it was a management and it wasn't really not like that. It's just, again, when you do get the break and it's time to escape, you have to make sure so the team of people are who running the thing, not easily distracted because Dan Newt is to the world. It isn't, he dance all, he didn't treasure. You feel me, I say? That's why my name Golden Child it look like. I never know why why these names come to me. 
I just know say I shine with anybody come around me, them tongue they, something big. And that, what that mean? <laughs> me don't know. Me just go out and work. Me just try. You know, if people can help them help to get me thing to the next level. But far as seeing me turn cracker than I eat out of garbage, I wouldn't hold my breath. So you so this is capital time, capital slip inside was the same time when you got this the placement in the NBA game and all of those stuff there, NFL and all those things there. Exactly. So no, that link no, no management thing. It was my AR from Slip and Side and the AR from Capital. Mm -hmm. Who Julian Boot, who was my AR there, who is responsible for a girl named Amaru La, La Negra and the guy named August, whatever, whatever. Mm -hmm. is is that set of people right there so if you hear all my stories that's that thing where i go so so now he was my ANR. so it was cool he's half jamaican you see me and so i did kind of know him always was around and he ended up the ANR at slip and side before that he was uncle luke wanted to sign me and he was about to structure that me but i never want that either for not nothing bad with Uncle Luke, I love Uncle Luke, but I know something tell me never take that deal there. And, and then him end up a sit side and sister me up that thing there. And him try to put a group together with me and some artists from up here. And then him goes here, so me I work and then deal to Greg Street. So you see now it end up a bigger link of Mexico and end up a A and R project with him friend. Mm -hmm. So all of the thing them, it was like, it, it's just, I just love my career straight up. I love it as rough as the link spot and to get to somebody that, that not intimidated to kind of get the right kind of deals, even when you peak in a general, you know, like Lenny Kravitz can peak, then he just get a cologne and he, with his song in the background, he don't need to even go up on a stage. So I, I think even certain other angles of the business, they didn't exploit when it was at the peak and it's not nobody fault. You really got to be a spe specific kind of person. You know what I'm saying? So I just know what it is and I just keep moving. I just keep the story going. Let me bring you back to your reggae roots in the States. I know you brought up his name earlier, Ali Campbell from UB40. How did you guys, I think you did a whole body of work with him. Yes. Yes. How do you no. guys connect to that? All right. No, you be forty and a label name Araka Arakabesa Records in Arakabesa, Jamaica. Now, a man working with me named June Fender had a friend down there named Pops, who is my friend now, who is Pops and Sly and Robbie them play this new song, then what I do now. After years again, me still say Pops Wagwan. And him said, yo, you know, say me a rabbit this time before Rabbi dead. Him, and then him sent me a track. And I said, go mash it up. And I said, come before Rabbi dead, but the track, you know. See? All right. Pops them was have a, doing a project. So Monster Shark, Vegas, Lady Saw, everybody depend on the compilation there. And me last the voice for the least of the money. See, car, the last one, them said them about to close off. So my big man friend said, tell the engineer, Paul Hussey, say, yo, Put him on it. And it was beats by Sly and Robbie, them play the jump pot on them, and their sons in England must have did some other things. So them was busting them youth them, and then Sly and Robbie them, and then them have Ernie Wrangling them, and Ken Boot them, and everybody around. So anyway, so tell about that. So we got to know. Boom. And my, my vice, when them send back the song them to the youth them of England, mm -hmm. them say, them want the album from me and Lady Saw. So me I say, Come on. You get me? Come on no man. Me last voice for the least money and me them all. You saw that again. Nobody not believe say me and me. It's always that. You get me? It's like me and the golden child. Me I eat leaf. Eddie Murphy and this pretty girl they are run down the world. And by the time them come, they realize say I could have come out if I want. But being being the blood in the heaven ain't that bad. Mm -hmm. You might have heard out this UB40, Ali Campbell now. So when them do the album now, Ali, come down with ABC, South Bank Show in England, who is ABC, and in, then they was doing a story about reggae. Mm -hmm. So then bring Ernie Wrangling, Ken Boat, 
And the one with President Brown at that the student on there and then bring fly down trailers and come and me and say, blood cleat, it's what is slow God. Uh, Ali Campbell himself you now when me, Ali, who I'm a bridging up to this day, the lead singer, uh, Ali said, You see, you caught the first song when him come, I was voicing a song named Them Can, oh God, well, no matter how oh, them try it. That's why me tell them, send me when they fit die. I will that meditation and it make me get by. That's my life, God tell them, say, Jaja can judge me, but no man can. So stay the point your finger, me touch shop off your hand. With the use of white man, black man, or Chinese man. No hate, no grudge, no in no, my religion, them no know me. Now, then now them come and rush tongues down. Put a bang 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 when he fast so bo 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 bo. Well I am from my talk kingdom. F the world me no. Yeah, and then me I do them song the so I start tech to me. And from then me and him turn friend and then just start link me with people at like England for license song. And them time they my work it all. I like him help us meet him a clean. Okay. Yeah, man, I like him first start voice and voice bit about clean them. Yeah, and he just take to me, I know I have what? There's this singing thing him always tell me I have. I know, say, I hit me, me head up, I do all right now. Singing. Your, your journey in this business has been so wild. Another, another classic producer you linked up with, too, was Willie Lindo in Miami too. How do you guys connect with this? Is remember for a lot of people, they don't realize Willie Lindo. He's the one with like, there is Hammond and all of these stuff here. So how did Daniel link with Willie Lindo? Why to take Babsy Grange again. And it's like, I, when I first came to my way back in the days, you know, she said, must, she said, she setting up something with him and you know, him like the vibes and thing and him come for me, drive an hour, saying, come for me, carry me go to studio, pay me. And I did voice, I sang, I think, another fire. Them said they know father, but them no know love now. Only know father name when them want judge you. Say them no still a sin, but them no know love now. Only no still a sin name when they want judge. I no judge them for judge. I teach them for teach. Then the author left the judge into the high priest. Cause no matter what, the message still have to reach. Another song name of ice cream. Mm -hmm. And that is how him starts and bombard. And him no work with DJ. So me I say again, where you love Bombay? Every time me advice, hear him. Um, me can teach you the baritone in you know, a dawn. Me can teach you. And then from them, him name Uncle with up to now. It's not now bad at me about the business. And me just call him and him just tell me, say for you, make them go and give me some motivation and keep running. Is a man like that to me. Him and half pint. You feel me? I say. So, you know what I mean? So, some great man love me still enough. You know? You know what I mean? Pan 11, you know? You know what I mean? So, I don't have a response about the manager thing or nothing. I just know, say, Willie didn't narrate me. It's a big thing, that. And then put me with Kashif. Then Kashif, little sister, went bad, same way. See him? And then put me with Sugar Minot. Pan the tainted love. You got some tainted love. Girl, you should have never, ever. This is than you. Now the sugar, da da. Cause you know what you too much better. Better than the other girl in the area. In the area. You get me? And it's like, as just, it's just some vibes. Uncle Willie is just some vibes. Every beat became like family, honorable. Taurus, them was there that time. Anthony Cruz. All of them was there, some little youth I tried before them both went to Jamaica. Yeah, man, I wrote them with that. Did you? Boy, the deeper we go into your story is the crazier it gets. And the fact that you just remember these names so easily and these situations, it's crazy, boss. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice. It, yo, I, I, all I have is memories, really, though, because remember, you know, when he's the blood, mm -hmm. them why I feel bad enough. See? So... That them there, that D-E-M there, is like, it's can your friend, it's can your enemy, it's can a girl where you never did notice when she love you half. It can a powerful man where now married and in wife and you, they have something and it's him have that string that it can anything. 
but that can work for me figure out. So, me just know, say, can I tell you, with this mystical story, because, like, you know what I mean? It's richer than money. Money couldn't buy this. Money can't buy this. At all. Crazy, crazy. Amazing highs. This is probably one of the lowest parts in your career here now, was yeah. getting shot. Yeah. What had happened there? How did that happen? Well, I was always excited to like get my music to dj so i had some bermuda friends in atlanta that lived downtown and nice area and everything not no hood no nothing and so one night i said you know what me i got my left studio i think i hear can studio yes and me i left and i said when me are going me i got drop me not call nobody me not tell nobody me i come so when me are going now let me stop. I'm still outside for a couple of minutes. I said, should I not come out? Let me know what they might play out, you know. I said, go on. I fight me. I fight the vibes the whole night, you know, Bridget. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go, fight the vibes, you know, man. I'm going to go, so, boom, knock the door. He said, we knock the door. I man in our mask, you know, them carnival master with the feather them. Mm -hmm. I'm going to see the two of you, them lay down. So, as I come in, my try grab my chain. So, I'm going to start and I walk off him and I say, and I say, Stop from bringing the van. I'm serious, I'm a virgin van. And I look at me, see them lie down on the ground. So I say, oh, come up on the ground. I want all the boys so tonight. I still walk and I pass off him, man. And I said, man, stop from bringing me, man. See, by the time we forgot up the stairs, I just say, nigga, boom, in on my chest. And I'm that kind of vibes then. Lick me in on my chest, scare me along. Black blood start, come on, I start here. <sighs> And black butt through my mouth and I said, what is karate movie when the Shaolin boy dead? I what is no oh God. And I said, mm -mm. I'm going to son, get up now and just from then, this is me. This now is me, you know, from the light, I am the light. I am the light. I don't care when nobody want dark up. I don't like, I only dark and oppressed and like me and ugly people. Meaning ugly, not what they, you know, meaning they see their self as. So I'm going to son now, boom. Walk outside and a Mexican man have him chunk up in a card shop bus. So you know. When we go out and say, all I remember slow motion like the gladiator. I remember the gladiator float in the movie. And you see, him a travel back to him family and where him wife him see her, that gray period, straight there. So so I'm gonna say now, I'm gonna say here. I'm gonna say, and him go, come away, go away. Cause he must think he's some drug war. So by the time we go, I'm gonna go so. Stand up now, Mr. Police. I said, I said, I want to go on. <laughs> All them know already. See, you see, by the time I go, so ambulance. If I jump here, I'm a dead. So I go, so now, boom. I'm a, I'm a go, so, so the officer come and say, What, well, Mr. Officer? I never know. Call no, me, I know. Say, I got to go on. Call me, I know, say, blood through my mouth. So my boy run out now, van, come out and say, What? You want? Look, you should jack it. And I'm showing me the hole in my jacket. And I said, so I crouched down and I said, God, me, I got dead. And, 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 and I said, dead one, well, get up. And then we go into the ambulance, remember the ambulance come. And we go stand a man in night, a, a black man in night, a older man, old man, and a Spanish boy, the desk, and I did have on a Gucci watch and some ring. And the boy got some woman, the Spanish one start, take out my ring them. And, and the, 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 the black older man hold my hand and say, don't worry about him, man. It's all good. And me end up in a hospital for about a week, a thousand people. So them know that somebody is somebody there. So what my people know my room smell like curry chicken, curry goat, fish. Jamaica, this is everybody I call from Sean to Sharon to everybody. My mother fly come up from sleeve, our teaching job, one bag of things. I'm gonna sub woman but there and heal and thing and when they come out, I said to them, the, 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 the black older man with the gray hair that was in the ambulance with me the night, where he is? Nobody don't know who that was. Enough. That's wild. Why? Like, forever, a minute of a fool, nobody. Where we can make up that boat? Where the man with all my hand and said, Bill, and cause him say, if you're in to me, if you want to report him, report him, but I wouldn't worry about that. Mm -hmm. That 
me a talk about. Yo, know deep that is. All right. So me know say a that me want dance all hip hop managers say it no make no sense. You know the blood even get the flesh. It no make no sense. We just thank God for life and uh, believe me. Them call me Godspeed. Call me a chap as much as me can. And the people them love the vibe. So it's just the story continues. Yo, myself. What type of zone did that put you in after getting shot? Because remember, you're originally from country, came to Uptown. Yeah, you're you're in the in the garrison. Yeah, that's cool and everything, but that's not a hundred percent your lifestyle. So what was that now actually getting shot now, boss? Yo, it's just a thing like Spagger was was in Atlanta. Him come and him come to the hospital the day I leave. And me and my mother was at a, a, a Jamaican restaurant and a Spraga walk in. And I just saw a tear drop out of the man eye and the man just said, John, no, I'm not even your world. That. Trust me, all of my friends, man friend, them, my tears come out of them eye. Because them know I know my world that. You feel me? But, you know, people hate me like that though with a love kill me, you know? <laughs> but I just show them, them don't know what say. It's just love. It's just like them afraid of what, how much money I can make or which girl they like me off. So sometimes them little petty thing there can hold down a generation. You know what I mean? I make some man afraid for leg of the right you them and them dead end at the top spot can't really communicate love with the world where it can change the world. And I know, I know what the world see and feel from my energy more than even music and the, my story. Is the people them cry for me? I wouldn't do this. Me, that put it down, mm -hmm. you know. But it's everybody, so continue. So, what was after you? You you got shot. Now, this is when you kind of because this was Atlanta. So this was before you even got to Miami, right? Yeah. I mean, I mean, I was always back and forth during the Miami. I could have never left it out. Car mm -hmm. too much life, and you know, and it's like, you know, my kids them was down here, you know, and them kind of way. So it's like I always in and out. So Miami really is just where I, I can feel like Jamaica the most. And it really have a support system where I, I, it's not wide from my lifestyle. If I want my little Jamaican food and them something that easier mm -hmm. than say Atlanta certain way. Although it there, I really feel it here because I have been to the beach and them something there. Yeah. Talking about Spraga, we'll bring it up to modern days here now. I know you're in the newest movie with him right now. How did right. you guys connect again and actually say, okay, you know what? Movie time. How did that work out? Well, Carlos Spraga, he was a man where he might not call it all the while, guy. I'm so busy and have so much going on. You know what I mean? I'm helping so much youth. Um, it's like he would have just called me. And I said, yo, may I shoot that scene there? Come meet me down and so and so and so and so. And I just go and I do my role. And enough people I say, yo, they love the energy. And I was like, yo, as the as the big as the big artist in it, I get round. So it's like to me, I was I wasn't even thinking it like that. Mm -hmm. You know, but the movie have a nice vibe. See, I seen it as a complete thing with me and I'd be like, oh, okay, I see how I fit in. But just being there shooting that scene and then not seeing it, you know what I mean? It's like, so that's how the movie come along. And, you know, I always I try to incorporate me with something where I can get mileage. I'm always a big man them really, from ever since. Big. And that's, that's good because that seems like that's at least one of the people from back then till today that you really kept the link and you guys stayed as brethren from then till now you know what i mean yeah i mean that never going to change you know what i mean but again like we said i am um, i have a journey and a story that people my story have been turned now you know what i'm saying and they are a part of my story if i'm not a part of theirs that's cool but they are a part of my story. Sean Paul, Mr. Vegas, Kid Kirk, everybody who near my call is no bad energy with me and them. And okay, you know what I mean? 
my thing is to make people shine and that's it if their job is not to really do that as a priority that was my job where god chose me for and nobody going to discourage me from helping somebody who need help mm. you know what i'm saying you know what i mean so i just making them know say it not like that never going to work because again you know we focus in a car the goal have us in line, you know, because I was supposed to be a lawyer. I don't know what I do in music. You know what I mean? Because look, dad's a lawyer, mom's a teacher. So then clearly you got, those are some high standards. You understand? Mm -hmm. But then you chose the music. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm a grandfather. I cost us sir, flowers, a glass pole there. My mouse every Sunday with two guard and back a car driving. So it's like, it's not even say me have to have no money in a man neither. It's more like me, it's like Prince Harry them then, to my mind. Cause even though I'm not there at town, I mean, I have no money, I dash me and I show off for my friend. I still asleep, sleep and swim in some place where tourists spend all $2,000 for the night. I'm an auntie there, so me can't sleep there for nothing at all. I'm going to eat out the whole of the tourist food. <laughs> but good. <laughs> so, so it's just our vibes, yo. I always, at the end of the road, happiness is the key. And I didn't know I am. I don't even know I am living right now in a car. So I am a vibe. I am a vibe. I don't even know. Like, I know that I am a vibe. Meaning, if I put myself as to get hurt by things that people try in a dance hall and, you know, it's not just a pasa pasa and laugh like some little, you know, other artists where. Oh, them just a cuss and them have the money and them I get too show and too placement. I know that my thing more spiritual. You know, this one is like Bob Marley, your words and your eye and your facial structure and the way you screw and the way you deliver your passion. You see me? Cause and his presence torment the oppressors. And that's all. Just like what Peter touched, I'm one of those. We don't try. I don't know how, but I have more soul. Probably it's the pain. Probably it's the, you know, I don't know. But the pain of, the, of just withstanding. I remember you know, if they want to the gorilla up on my back, I still have to lift it and carry it even when I smile. I just, me and me now nah, make them me ugly me up like them. You get me? So that's the strength that I know, say. Keep me up to this day. Believe me, when the youth, them are working me with the new set of sound. Mm -hmm. And them I said, you know, from them say, all right, that tone, the talking voice, is mainly what they're using right now to do these kind of sound. That's how I know it. <laughs> I just, use, I'm not going in another low. If I put in the law and I just put the court in out, then I want to take you on a holiday in my bed where you're going to stay. I'll tell you that you're going to go play. Third round the other way, it's before blaze on me, on me, and it's there. You got me? You got me? Feeling it, energy. So it's like I learned from Wayne Wonder. I mean, come on. Yeah, man, you're, you're, I'm telling you, Don, your stories, your journey, everything has been nothing short of amazing. All right? Mm -hmm. It's, yeah. And it's just, you just talking like, okay, yeah, yeah. I just linked up with this person, that person, their <laughs> boss. For real, yo, that's what everybody, yo, I'm not sure enough. And I still want proper management of what I'm doing because I'm an enterprise and I see that they got the platforms, the placement, but they're not, they don't have shock value and they don't have people believe in them. And I don't know how, I don't know. I don't know what to, to tell them, but I just got to do it. And because I see it, say, yeah, I love the youths then, but come on. You know what I'm saying? Crazy. Come, come on, like like bigger artists. It ain't that bad where they saw the youth them. I, I am the youth them. I'm Don Youth. I'm Golden Child. Like, I'm a channel all the time. You don't know where to go for that. I'm sorry if something molested your brain. Well, my new album, you know? When when we had the, all the Sly and Robbie song, Mr. said when they hear them, the dub production there. I know the bass line out, boom, 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 speak up. And then we hear, there, there we go, there, there we go. And me, I give them that. And I make people goosebump crawl up under them. I'm a birthday party coming up in a saga, crawl them up in a... 
you know, you have a lot of music. The new album you're talking about is unpredictable. And I know you have out some new visuals for it also. The Oja yeah. and the Great Adventure. You know what I mean? Talk to us yes. about that. Well, Oja, again, is pops from UV40. And more than like a style, Robbie and the, the bass lines, as usual, that's the pops role. So it's like, it's a project with him and a youth named Dean Hopkins, one of his partners. They, again, send me that project and... I got voice on it by 20 minutes. Then I say, you couldn't be done. I say, yo, Bridget, stop from me, man. I wait, I just wake up, man. I saw my thing set. By the time I'm done, I mix them, I mix. Me, I say, I love this. I love this place. And them got so now, boom. Right now, I bring them on, bring me come to England. One of them friends, them promoter friend, I have 8,000 people in that place. Ha, ah, done, done. And me, I say, what do I do? If you say, oh, ja, where do I go from here? You know that I pray for them every day, but mankind has gone astray. I sing it out, oh, ja, you know I prepared for them. I ain't scared of them. They mix up and black from the start till the end, but I, I now go stop healing, ja. Not give it up, no care how it draw off. You get me? You understand. I understand. It's just, yeah. it's just, it, I mean, I mean, I mean, I'm not showing sure off, or I didn't put no falsetto, but I put my feelings into it. And I know everybody asks in the same question where do we go from here, guys? Mm -hmm. In our life, a lot of us are. Our friends from Israel going through depression, I feel healing through the phone. Our people right there, I feel heal them. It's a healing process. So I still don't get, y'all still gonna make the blood suffer. I still don't get it. Why y'all making all the top artists them the blood of the thing suffer? How y'all get that? I expect, I mean, so that's why I say I take the risk to say things and that's what them love me for and that's what torment them because them can't hate me don't do who don't talk to me mm -hmm. and most of the time it's who me help out stop talk to me you get me <laughs> you know i can't tell you no different and walk wide and but i remember when they wanted tea and i beat up my glass window even there and the mother was closed down the road so it's up to them you know because if them was round me, I know say half of the pasta pasta them would have be in them wouldn't be there. And if they're big now, they would have be six thousand times more. Car unity is strength. So I just the story continue. I must uh, understand. Listen, yeah. you've had this career from the yeah. early nineties to right now, twenty twenty two. When has been the highest point in your career, and when has been the lowest point in your career thus far? Highest point, highest point in my career, working with Sharon Burke. You know, enough people don't understand her, but I love her forever. You know, cause she teach me everything I know about dance hall and, you know, and them thing there, you know. One day she going to understand, say, time for that meeting, the food, I get this thing on a level car. The game need me, you know, cause that's the highest part. The lowest part of my career is when my brother did, my father did, and then two years later, my brother did. It's just like, so it's just me and my mother right now. So I'm just, I'm a daughter then. So, mm -hmm. you know, I just, I feel I have a whole, you know, set a pretty daughter where it's just me and them. So it's enough passion in me. So that's the lowest part when my brother, especially mm -hmm. did. Screw Jack, you know, David, where me? So that's the lowest part. He was your older brother or younger brother? Older brother. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So that's the lowest part. No bad part in my career, I can say. Low. It's only disappointing. I don't really go low. I get disappointed of people, mm -hmm. you know, choices of how them deal with it and leave stains on people blood sweat and tears for over the years everybody do that them not afraid for you know and i mean it's not like you could have even sit who 
doing it for set on a stage for crash him like a cartel or Movado. If you said that, it's just like, don't give him the stage. So I, I still don't lose. You, you know what I'm saying? I still don't lose. So whenever they're ready for that, I'm ready too. You get me? 2022, right? <laughs> yeah. We brought up their names earlier. A lot of great work. What's your relationship, if any, with Sean Paul and Mr. Vegas in 2022? Um... Not really none. I see Vegas online more time and just talk about him. Yo, I'm Vegas. That in a, yo, yo, Vegas. That in a, when we did a DJ like this, him said DJ use a big voice and them thing that just memories and just said die out there. I wanted the baddest hook maker them in the world. Me and Sean don't, don't hear from him. Certainly when my brother did him, they give me a link. I said, Jay, sorry about David. Cause I know my brother too. And you know what I'm saying? And that's it. So, but it's not really like, okay, you're going to hear a call. And I say, yo, like I say, you know, yo, what I, you know, I don't really even need no call, really. So it's not really, it's just love. We know, say, there is some form of love, but there's a little thing where that's gossip. So I make it go on, gossip. You get me? I did, you know what I mean? Good. I hear you hundred percent. Boss, you see this conversation I knew done, the amount of hurdles we had to get through to actually make this happen. I yeah. knew this was going to be special. You understand? Yeah, man. I Definitely. This was going to be a special conversation. Definitely. And it's a, it's a big thanks to you in, a, and in helping me get my message to the world and, and the quest for the fishers of people where they can like get this thing on a level and stop fighting about crossover and this and that and just from it the good music if you are then Ryan Morgan or you are Jamaican you have a crossover if you are Buster Rhyme and you want to hide and flip it you can cross over you don't have to tell everybody what it is or where them music at the tail me not depend on something that because it builds stigmas you understand it's like saying me only like Girls, that's 120 pounds. I lie, man. <laughs> I lie, man. You get me? So I'm just too. I, sometimes I don't even read. I'm one of the fakest persons you ever go and book, but I'm true. Mm -hmm. I'm true. I'm fake because I will fake it if I can do. I mean, like an R&B song. And when I don't fake it, it end up with something. So I like faking it. Like Michael Jackson put on her gloves and her shoes. Mm -hmm. And moonwalk, that's fake. It. You know what I mean? So we teach people, say, we're different. We are different, you know, the mega. So go on, big up yourself. And we just got you and just get it to the world. Anybody will know, say, they want the unpredictable album. Unpredictable album is basically, like I said, I was expressing to you. It's just holler at me in my DM, holler at me anywhere you can find Dan Youth and leave a message. Or you can get singles on iTunes like OJ, oh, Great Adventure. Now I drop the song, One Life. They need to, they need to, you know, One Life, One Life. Because that song, there's the people that might go crazy. One Life, I only got one life. So I got to live my life the way that I like. Money, you feel me, kid, no way, nah, bro. No, you know, they must kill myself and look, nah, stop, nah, stop. You know, send me a few rise up. I who them must I like who them must size up. The money you team will give you kind. You get me? I give them some, you know? Yeah. Energy. You understand. Listen, yeah. The floor is yours. Any big up, leave any contact information, anything you want to say right now. The floor is yours 100 percent done before I get you out of here. Yeah, man. Just big up everybody. Big up the Golden Child family. Big up Congo Blacks. You don't know. Big up Natty Sprigger. You know what I'm saying? Big up my daughter, them. Big up Muscle. You know? Enter, entertainment Report Podcast. Respect for having me. Thanks for helping me get my message across. Everybody gonna get my unpredictable album. $20 for my link. Support me, not iTunes. Shibi do bop, bop, bop. Just like that. And where could they find you online? Leave some social media handles where they could check you out. All right. Them can go up on Instagram and it's D O N Y U T E. Facebook, the same thing. And YouTube, you can go there. 
You know what I mean? And my website coming here. Website coming. Yeah. Done. First of all, before I even get you out of here, I got to big up Twiggy for making yeah. this happen. You understand? Big up Twiggy 100% for making this sit down happen. Yo, big up Twiggy. Twiggy! And me and Twiggy have a bad song. The single is out. Everyday blessings. Blessings every day. L look up that song. Then my mad over it. Forget to tell it. They're on the album too. Big up to get. Are you met the link here? Man, as I respect. Love, girl. Yeah. Dan, let me give you an outro and get you out there because this conversation, epic conversation, big boss. You understand? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is Muscle and this has been another Two Live Music Cuts Entertainment Report podcast. And we are out. This podcast is brought to you by www.twolinedmusichut.com. <laughs>